and then I only want a green uptrend indicator. So you can hit apply. And this will show you the creamest of the croppest in the market. How cool is that? Okay, let's talk about the new updates because um, this is huge. Huge, 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 huge. This morning I logged into Outlier and um, the first thing I noticed was the logo up here changed. Now me and Rude, so Rude's is my editor. Um, she does all the editing and graphic design. She's amazing. And she and I came up with this logo here, right? It, it's Outlier and this is Outlier's went underneath it. So when I logged in, I saw that I'm like, whoa, updates got pushed because it didn't used to say that. It had a, a slightly different logo up there. And then I was looking around, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Things are looking a little bit different, a little bit different. And then I looked over here and I saw the Holy Grail, the screener. And boy, was I one happy boy this morning. So let's uh, let's talk about that screener. Come to Phoenix for the real heat. No, thank you. <laughs> let's talk about that screener real quick. So if you click that, it's gonna take you to this page here. Now, um, full disclosure, this got pushed this morning. When it got pushed this morning, there was a tiny break in, um, I don't know what you call it, in the internet. Um, somebody had noticed that and um, had asked, you know, what's going on? Find it real quick. Oh yeah, Alex mentioned it this morning. Hey, something's wrong. And then I logged in only about 30 minutes later and all the updates had pushed through. So if that happened to you, just know that we were pushing in the updates. Now, um, I went hog wild on this thing this morning. When I'm, I spent probably two hours trying everything I possibly could to break it. And I did find several bugs. Um, a couple I'll point out real quick, just so you know, we are already aware of them. Uh, this indicator is misspelled. Um, the communication sector is not listed as one of the choices. Um, what else? I told Mahesh, I really didn't like how it just has like 10 space 30. I'd rather it say like 10 dash 30 or something like that whenever you're choosing these values. Um, but we're aware of these issues and they are going to be worked on in the next you know, several business days. Uh, and probably by Wednesday, everything should be solid. So if you see any issues, please hit us up in the discord let us know because we want to make this perfect and um, if we miss something and you catch it please let us know now let's dive into this right i am so stoked about this so you can start over so let me start over with reset filter and this is um and this is so cool whenever we started with outlier right this was like the end all be all, right? The watch list. You've got your favorites, your bull list, and your bear list. Everything with the buy signal comes through on the bull list. Everything with the bears or buy a sell signal comes through on the bear list. And we got to talking. Mahesh saw how I was trading it. Now, granted, the fact that I am a real trader and I really do trade with Outlier has helped us tremendously. Okay. Because how I've been using it, Mahesh and Mark said are taking notes and they came up with the idea of, hey, we should have a screener. That's going to help everybody. That's going to help all of our customers, especially those who are watching in on the uh, trading room with Chris. So this was uh, this was their idea. And man, is it so good. So this is the watch list, right? You've got all your your bull signals, your bear signals. Now, this is like the watch list on steroids. OK, so you can filter it down by whatever sector you want. And let's say energy for a moment. And then you can go into industry and you can even refine it further. So energy equipment, oil and gas, or maybe let's go to, instead of energy, let's do financials. And then in here, you can say banks, capital markets, consumer finance, whatever, lots of different choices. Or you can pick more than one, energy, financials, healthcare, industrials, whatever. There's 11 sectors and you can click one, 11 or zero, leave it wide open. Then the industry will update based on what you select right there. So outlier signal return. now. This is one way that I can tell you right now, it's going to save me so much time because whenever I look at the list here, one of my steps was to copy the list, go through all my processes. And then before I actually get into a trade, go through and filter out um, which ones have positive expectancy, right? And now it shows right here on the screen, right? Outlier signal return. This is an enhancement over the bull list, right? This is the bull list. Doesn't show the returns, but this does right here. So that's really sick. Very happy about that. And you can say positive or negative, right? Um, we had a conversation about um, how much positive, how much negative that may be an enhancement in the future, maybe like 
greater than 10%, greater than 50%, something like that. But right now it's just positive or negative. I don't know who would ever click negative, but somebody might, I don't know. But that is uh, definitely gonna save me a lot of time right there. Michael asks, can you save different configurations? Oh boy, can you? Oh boy, can you? Um, so I'll tell you what, we're gonna build a scanner real quick and then I'll show you uh, how that works because all you have to do, Michael, is hit the save button up here, put in your configuration, and then it'll show up here on your screeners. Now look, I've got Chris and Chris too. Uh, one thing, one bug that I found earlier is that you can't delete. Um, in fact, I'll try it right now. You really wanna delete? Oh, delete successfully. That is a bug that's already been fixed. Sweet. Because this morning I couldn't delete. Hell yeah, we're making this better as we go. Uh, so yeah, any values you change in here, you can uh, hit apply filter and then save. So let's let's continue on through this and then um, I'll show you exactly what I've been doing. So capital efficiency. So we talked about signal return, capital efficiency. Now, the way to describe capital efficiency is how long are you in the market compared to um, what your returns are. So for example, if you are in the market the same amount of time and you get the same amount of returns, then your capital efficiency, efficiency is one, right? No big deal. If you're in the market half as long, but you have the same returns, meaning that if the market's 360 days, you're only in for 180, your capital efficiency is 2.0 because you're getting just as much return with half the time in the market. That's your capital efficiency. Or if you're in um, for half the time, so 180 days, and you have double the amount, then that's a 4x capital efficiency. Does that make sense? Let me know if that doesn't make sense. But that's not something I've looked at. In fact, this morning when I was playing around, I asked Mahesh if we could have um, some more variables here because um, I was just playing around and I was like, I want to see... 1.0 and greater and uh that wasn't a choice right here so i think that that could be a, a little update that he's uh gonna build in real quick michael says great and you got a multiple i don't i don't know what the limit is here but you got a multiple and then 30 day average volume now i always go over a million because i want as liquid as i possibly can so i'll just drop right there maybe you like low float stock so less than 500,000. current signal status buy or sell exactly the same as the bull or bear list, right? Buy or sell. So we'll hit buy. Price change. Now this is one, the SPY is a great example right now because the SPY had a really strong pullback, a 9% pullback from highs, isn't that crazy? Pullback and then um, back up again, which outlier is now at where it was when it gave that buy signal. So that buy signal, at the moment when it came through, looked pretty hard, uh, but now it's looking pretty great. This tool is gaining on usefulness. You're 100% right. And that's what we're trying to do is make it better every single day. So price change over the last X number of days, you pick, right? So let's go a month and let's say 5% correction, 10% correction, or maybe you want a huge big old dip, 20% correction. <gasps> Michael's here. He is subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> He's making stacks on stacks over here. <laughs> Price change. That that's what that means right there. Now oscillator. Let's go into one of the stocks here. So the oscillator is this blue line. Mark has described this. Mark's one of the co-founders. Mark has described this as the number one most important indicator in the entire platform. This is not a moving average. This is the um, the AI's prediction of where the price is going. Okay, and when it's really really low on the chart here so imagine imagine this is zero and this is a hundred right when it gets really low it's at extremes when it gets at really high it's at extremes and so there's a lot more that goes into it um honestly it's really complicated <laughs> i'll be honest with you it's really complicated but what you want to know this is what you really want to know is if it's moving up that's bullish if it's moving down that's bearish so they distilled it so it works for Chris's tiny brain. <laughs> Moving up. And market cap. Maybe this is something important to you. Um, you can set this to whatever. X number of billions up to 10 trillion. Um, for me personally, I don't have an opinion. So I would leave that wide open for me. Price range. I am a snob. 
And because I'm a snob, I only want stocks that are $20 or greater. So you can just type in 20. Um, you can leave max at blank and it'll go forever. Uh, or you could say, you know what? I only want to look at stocks that are between 20 and 100. I'm not sure what happens if you do 20 and 10. That should break it. Let's see. Yeah, I broke it. No stocks found. But if I go between 100. Oh, I probably need to clear all that stuff. Hang on. So check it out. Uh, you can hit apply filter or reset filter, which let me hit reset. That's what I meant to do. And then I can say 20 and 100. And then apply filter. And then that'll show me the stocks that meet all the other criteria between 20 and 100. Takes just a second here. There we go. All right, so now heat map value. The heat map is this right here inside the chart. Now, I love the heat maps. This is honest to goodness, one of my very favorite parts of this, right? Where Mark says he loves the oscillator, I love the heat map. The heat map tells me a couple of things. How greedy are people? So if it's super dark green, that's ultra greedy. If it's super dark red, that's ultra fearful. Now there's an old quote that says, uh, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. So that is one of the reasons why I love this is honestly, it will tell you how greedy people are getting. And in fact, oh, I just learned this recently. Did you know this? If you, you can zoom in, of course, like I've been doing, but you can move the bar. I showed this to Mahesh and Mark one day and they're like, yeah, duh. And I was like, shut up. This is new. I didn't know this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I love this. This is definitely, definitely one of my um, favorite things inside the platform. And if you look at this bar up here, as I go, you'll see it change. And you'll see if I put it right here, it says heat map G31. That means on the greed scale from zero to 50, it's at 31. And if I go over the next day, it's at 32. 31. Now you can see the greed is actually coming back down. That is an exit signal for me. I love this. I use it all the time. I'm super stoked about it because now we can actually filter on that. So let's say if I'm going long, I want any R. I want any value in the R area, any value in the fear. But on the greed, I might cap it at 40. I might cap it at 35, right? Because the further it goes, the stronger it's going to snap back like a rubber band. So that might be be the criteria I go with. Uh, I was playing with it earlier and I set it at 40. And then uh, overlay indicators. Now the indicators right here are these backgrounds, right? So you've got white, you've got red, and you've got green. This tells you if the stock is trending up, if it's trending down, or if it's trending sideways. Super easy. And you can filter and say, okay, only want when it's trending up. So let's reset the filter and I'll show you exactly how I set up mine. And by all means, you don't have to set yours up the same way as mine. You can set yours up any way that works for you. So sector and index, I'm leaving wide open. Signal return, positive. Capital efficiency for now, I'm leaving wide open. 30-day average volume, I want to over a million. Current signal status, buy. Price change, I'm leaving that wide open. Oscillator moving up. Market cap, all the way open. Price range, over 20. Heat map value, I want all the R's. I want all the greens up to 40. And then I only want a green uptrend indicator that you can hit apply. And this will show you the creamest of the croppest in the market. How cool is that? And then you can do different sorting, right? But um, for me, I just want to see what the signals are today. So today it's USFD and XPO. And let's jump into both of those real quick. USFD is currently around $57 with the buy signal. Signal started today. Historic return, 16%. Capital efficiency is at 0.7. Uh, this is in the consumer staple sector, which, which is important. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, the overlay started yes two days ago. 30-day average volume is nearly 2 million. The G map, uh, G map, the heat map is at G2. Oscillators moving up. And the price change uh, yesterday was 1.97%. So there you go. So that is what I would want to see. That's a beautiful stock setup to me. How cool is that? So that saves me a boatload of time. 
because this is everything that I'm filtering for manually. And I can just click ba bam and go. And so whenever you find one that you like, just hit save, type in whatever, example, save, selection saves successfully. Then you can go over here to your screeners. You can see Chris 2, you can see example. So we'll go to Chris 2. And it honestly should give you the exact same results. So isn't that cool, right? So I want you to go and I want you to start playing with this inside of the platform. Let us know if you run into any um, any issues as you're doing it, right? Because like I say, we have identified some bugs. We're actively working on it. I saw my hash has already fixed one bug that I found earlier today. Um, so we are trying to make this as very, very, very amazing as we possibly can. So with all of that being said, I want to jump into the um, market analysis right now and run through as if I were uh, putting some trades on today. I won't be, but it's really, really close. Shouldn't have given you the ant. I mean, I should have left that as a spoiler. I can't believe I spoiled it. Welcome to the outlier trading room. This is smart trading made simple. Save time, make money, start winning with less risk. Now that's what I like to call profit hacking. We're going to be covering uh, what's inside the playbook today. If you don't have a copy already, head over to profithackingplaybook.com or inside the VIP toolkit um vip investors toolkit in our discord you can get a copy of it as well and for those of you who don't know me my name is chris for i've twice been awarded top 100 people in finance i've been successfully trading since 2009 i'm a partner with outlier and this is my style of trading using the outlier data now this is called the golden ticket trading strategies the eight steps to turn profit hacking into pure gold and if you're watching this make sure you subscribe just look down real quick double check that you are subscribed good to go and the golden ticket trading strategy starts with a few key things here like the spy signal is on a buy. Um, and we can see right here that, uh, in fact, while that loads, we're basically back to where the stock had that buy signal at this point. We're like 50 cents off. So while at the time it went down, that definitely wasn't awesome. It's come back and we saw this happen last October. So it absolutely could still rocket ship higher like it did in October. We just have to wait and see. Now, the performance summary on the SPY shows 73%. I like that. Uh, capital efficiency. We talked about that a little bit ago. You're in the market with the buy and sell signals here. Roughly half the time, 1,100. Let me make this bigger. 1,163 days of buy and hold data. And you're only in the market 629 days following these buy and sell signals. Yet you're getting somewhat similar returns. And so that is why the capital efficiency is 2.0 or near 2.0, 1.85, because you're in the market for basically half the time and you're getting practically the same results, which is huge, right? Imagine being in the market half the number of days, yet still having returns as good as the market, because then you can put that other half of the time into something else. That's why that matters, right? If I'm only tying up my money for half the time, that means the other half the time, I can be putting it into something else and having more opportunities. That's why it matters. So uh, one thing I actually did forget to mention is um, there's ETF scanners as well. Um, I'm really bad about that when it comes to the watch list because it's it's right here. And I just completely forget that there's ETFs. But you can do um, lots of really cool things with ETFs here. There's all kinds of different indexes that you can follow. The issuer as well. Right, maybe like Vanguard ETFs, you can filter only on those. And then positive expectancy, you can even filter by expense ratios, which is the thing for ETFs. Capital efficiency, greater than a million, current buy status, and then the indicators as well. Uh, and then you can save it as a different screener. Isn't that cool, All right? So this is like the Chris ETF screener. It's basically the same as what's on the stocks, but I just thought that was great. So the SPY signal is a buy. Now the market breadth. Oh, we are so stinking close on market breadth. We are so stinking close. That's on the five period. Don't get excited. That's the 10. It's so stinking close. Could I go on right now? I absolutely could. Am I going to? No, I'm going to follow my rules because that's what I need to see right here. Is market breadth crossing over. And um, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely uh, excited because by Monday, Mathematically speaking, that should cross. 
But we're going to continue on forward because we have more data now and I want to play with it. Now, let the market tell you where it's going. Now, a lot of you haven't seen this because I haven't traded in the last month, but I want to let the market tell me where it's going with the 10 over the 20 with price over the 50 on the S&P 500. The 10 is crossed over the 20 at this point. The price is over the 50 at this point. This is bullish. Now, market breadth is not quite there. It's ultra close, but it's not right there. So I won't be trading. Uh, the next step would be to take off any existing trades if I had them. Um, now, I do need to update this PowerPoint. There's a lot of upgrades that we have had that I don't have to do anymore, which is really cool. Now, the outlier buy and sell signals filter for green and red overlays, stocks and ETFs. Now, I can just roll up into the scanner, hit my screener, whatever one I want to use, right? I'll use Chris2, for example, apply the filter. And then there's my list. And I can go to ETFs. And I can get those guys. Screener, Chris ETF, apply. And then we've got three. Isn't that cool? Eh. There we go. Now, this is for uh, spies and cues, which I'm not ready to trade on today. Then I'm going to throw this into uh, TrendSpider just to check for a few things. Uh, these are not capable inside of Outlier just yet, but checking to make sure there's no order blocks in the way. There's no earnings in the next three days. The price is moving in this direction, right? Which should be the same as the overlay, but it's just one, you know, 10, 20, 50 on side the stock. And then above the prior day's low, right? So if it's below yesterday's low, I'm not interested. Then we can run a scan off those, which I've already done. And there's a handful, right? So we could look at something like, um, well, actually, that one's right inside of an order block. So I need to update that scanner. So like that would be one, right? 10, 20, 50, no order blocks in the way, no earnings. And then one step that I can absolutely take out is I don't have to review the sector. Oh, I do have to review the sector breath. Confirm each expectancy. What I wanted to say is part of my process that I'm going to do is I'm going to something's going on, on my computer. There we go. I'm going to update these. They don't update often, right? Because the market breadth is super cyclical. So for example, let's go discretionary, consumer discretionary. This one is right at it. I would consider that one because they're they're basically kissing at that point. Um, I would consider this bullish. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna update this, you know, as needed. Right. And it's not gonna be all that often. Um, uh, but then I'll have the ability to filter. And you'll see see me do this in real time. Um, and this is actually my list right here. Like that. And then we'll run the scanner and then we'll see what pulls through, right? Now, some of these have been pretty awesome. Like that one was a buy signal on August 6th on Carvana, it's already up 11%. eBay has been pretty sideways. FL, that actually got a buy signal way back here. It's up 30% since the buy signal. Go, go Daddy, G Diddy, as I like to say, is up nearly 4%. LNG is up almost 2%. Shake Shack is up nearly 13%. These are crazy numbers, right? Timus, T-Mobile is up over 5% since the buy signals came through. Uh, this one's flat. Uh, this one is flat, although it did sell off, but it's flat right now. And then WMB, I got some old notes on there. So as you can see, we have, we've basically unlocked the easy mode when it comes to Outlier, right? Everything you'd want to know inside of all those stocks is all going to be a one spot, one spot. It's going to save you so much time. It's going to save me so much time. And I am super duper duper stoked about it, especially when I don't have to go in and manually look at each one of these guys. Right. I don't have to manually go in and say, OK, what's my outlier return? Right. So I'm really stoked about this. Uh, do you guys have any questions about the scanner real quick since I've got you on the line? Uh, I want to make sure that if you have any questions about the scanner, 
uh, we can address them real quick. And then of course, please let us know in the Discord. If you if you come across any issue inside the scanner, uh, let us know so we can get it updated. Uh, Mahesh has already made many updates today to it. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm, I'm super, super, super stoked about this because I can see how that's going to save me a ton of time inside of here. So I'll give you all just a second to type in anything there. Okay, I'm not seeing anything pull through. I don't see any questions coming through, but that's all right. Thank you all so much for coming today. I'm really stoked. Um, I have every confidence that uh, I'll be trading along again on Monday, um, which is convenient to have this all come out the day before I uh, am ready to start going live on some trades. And um, and I can't I can't explain to you how excited I am, especially given the fact that not all that long ago we figured out the uh, the master key, where you combine the sector breadth, the market breadth, and then the spy signal, and the fact that I hadn't made any of these um, regretful trades going short when the market just like absolutely had this ridiculous face melting rally um, because of having the master key. Max, hey Max. Max says, what about adding the screener to the trend of the sector? I have asked about that. Uh, we don't have that ability just yet, um, but I would like that as well. I would like that as well. Mention in the Discord. Oh, Davis sent me a message. So yeah, Max, I would like to see that as well. I don't know when that will come through, but that is a really good suggestion. I appreciate that a lot. All right. Thank you all so much for coming to today's Outlier Trading Room. Get ready. Monday, we're going live, unless something crazy happens. Monday, we're going to start putting some trades on, and I am ultra stoked about it. Have a fantastic weekend. Be ready to go on Monday, all right? It's going to get busy. Get your big boy pants on, and uh, have a great weekend. Talk soon.